Today we're talking with my friend Edrizio de la Cruz. His successful immigrant startup founder story is truly one of the biggest roller coasters I've seen in my days in tech. And he came out on top having sold his fintech payments company, Arcus, to MasterCard in 2021. He was a visiting group partner at Y Combinator, and I worked with his company back in the day when he first went through the batch. From underdog to undefeated, here is Edrizio's founder story. Let's get started. My first startup was selling guayabas in the streets of Santo Domingo. I used to do that to help my parents make ends meet. Uh, at age 11, I immigrated to Harlem, where I took on a job as a grocery store beggar. And by age 16, I had just witnessed a lot. Witnessed everything from police brutality to assault. I lost one of my best friends to, to gang violence. And I just wanted to escape. Edrizio went to college and joined the Air Force, but life intervened and he dropped out to become an aircraft mechanic. He did that for six years before going back to college at the age of 25. I wound up working at JP Morgan as an investment banker, which was a, a mind opening experience for me because there was I, this Dominican kid from the projects working in one of the world's most white shoe environments. And it really opened up my eye to what an environment of success looks like. And instead of being intimidated by it, I was really felt empowered by it because I felt like I could swim and play with the best. And when you surround yourself with the best, you ultimately become the best. So after that, I became kind of enamored with the things that I could do. I wanted to try to go to a better ecosystem and apply to business school. Edrizio got into Wharton and then applied to YC. And that's when I met him. I wound up ultimately starting a company called Regali around remittances, which is the idea that we got in with at Y Combinator in 2013. Edrizio knew a lot about a space that was off the beaten path that many tech people didn't know about. And he was able to figure that out because he was literally not out of central casting. His family and his friends would send money back home all the time. I thought about remittances as something that was kind of very near and dear to my heart, but at the same time it was a massive market that nobody was, was attacking at the time. So I felt like I wanted to partner with other people that were like-minded, yet complementary to me, where we align was on the value of being all of us immigrants who wanted to change that product and that's that market. I remember working with the team during the batch and I was impressed that they were focused on such a real problem. How do immigrants send money back to their families back home? The more unusual a market is, often the bigger and more untapped that opportunity. We have been part of other accelerators and we thought we were crushing it in those other accelerators. And the minute that we get into YC, it's like, uh-uh, you're not crushing it. You are way behind on product development, on talking to customers, on your trajectory. And while that felt intimidating and that definitely elicits some degree of imposter syndrome, it felt rewarding to know that you're in the right room. Being in that room helped Edrizio and Regali pick up the one thing that I haven't seen anyone else really teach, how to move fast and stick. I think one thing I've learned as a founder is that you gotta stick around long enough to get lucky. Just don't die, just keep moving forward, keep putting one foot in front of the other, and eventually good things will happen. And if you keep iterating and learning and getting better, you put yourself in a position where ultimately opportunity meets luck, which equals success. But as we all know, the beginning of a startup is merely the first chapter. Regali, which became Arcus later, was off to the races raising money at Demo Day. But five years later, it was time to get to the Series A. So in 2017, we went out to raise our Series A. I was super excited. We were getting some good traction. And then first weekend, 10 meetings out, no results. Three weeks out, 30 meetings, no results. A month out, 50 meetings, no results. Three months out, 100 meetings, no results. Six months out, 144 meetings, no results. Seven months out, I finally get a yes. It was August 2017, I had just gotten married. I was 
super excited. I had a wife, I had a company that was gonna raise $10 million. We got a series A term sheet from one of the biggest banks in the United States. And I was stuck. I started celebrating with my team and high-fiving. Lo and behold, a bank being a bank took a long time to do diligence. We were ready to celebrate and make the announcement at a conference in, in Phoenix in September, 2017. And they started asking questions and bringing in third-party consultants. And after a while, they just went cold. And a week after, uh, before the announcement, I received a call from the bank, very somber. And my contact says, we need to talk, Edricio. And the words that I heard next hit me like a ton of bricks. Edricio, we are not gonna do the deal. That hit me like a bus. And I kept bargaining naively thinking, oh, you're gonna do half the deal? You're gonna do a quarter of the deal? I can get other partners. No. So there I was, four weeks left of runway, $10 million gone. I had to tell my co-founder and I had to get on a plane to do a conference. And instead of celebrating, I had to go into rescuing. So I got on the plane, I landed in the conference in Phoenix, and I started talking to anybody and everybody that would listen to me. I got some yes and some maybes, but the only yes that I got was from an investor in Mexico. But he wasn't at the conference. He told me, Edricio, we can, we're happy to talk to you, but you gotta fly over and meet with our partners. I said, fantastic, short flight over. I fly over, and if you can recall, September 2017, that's when an earthquake happened in Mexico. So I ended up doing an emergency landing in Mexico, and my meeting was canceled. And I could have given up. I could have just said, you know what? This is clearly not gonna work out. But I said to myself, man, I screwed up the situation. I will not get on a plane until I unscrew the situation. I am the CEO of this company and I will do whatever it takes to rescue the company and put it back where it belongs. So I waited about a week. I did my first pitch all in Spanish, we had never done. Lo and behold, they wound up coming in and in a matter of four weeks, I wound up raising an $8 million Series A right before we ran out of money. Edrizio's story is truly one of perseverance. Flash forward to 2020, he reached another pivotal moment in the startup. The company then rebranded from Regali to Arcus and became one of the fastest growing fintechs focused on Latin America. So in 2020, uh, we were raising our Series B. My wife and I moved to San Francisco. We were head on committed to raising our Series B and we were getting traction and everything was going perfect. My wife and I were pregnant for the first time. I was super excited. And then COVID happened in March 2020. It impacted all of our lives. Uh, unfortunately, my wife and I had a miscarriage and uh, shortly thereafter, uh, the fundraise went off the rails. I started having a lot of internal conflict. One of the parting ways with my co-founders, I actually was voted out of the company temporarily. I was in a very dark time in my life. It was felt really beyond depression. I felt like the thing I had built didn't want me to be a part of it, but I felt like I needed to pull through and push through. I felt like I had built these things alone with my co-founders. And along that journey, I found a book called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And one of the quotes that stands out in that book is a quote that says, if the impediment to action advances action, what stands in the way becomes the way. And when I heard that quote, I felt like this is the impediment to action. I need to use this and I need to win, not in spite of my circumstances, but because of my circumstances, because of everything I've gone through to get to this point in my life not only as a founder, but as a person of color, as an immigrant that grew up in the project, I need to do this not for myself, not for my family, but for my community. I represent something bigger than myself. Lo and behold, I applied to uh, in a competition called Visa Everywhere. I won the competition, the first one to win the competition, both as the crowd favorite and being number one. And I used that kind of halo effect to wind up raising a Series B left by SoftBank and City. That got their attention from MasterCard. And initially it was going great. It was supposed to be a, a 60 day process. Uh, that process wind up being 18 months. 
And that was another journey and odyssey because I really didn't know what was going to happen. My wife and I actually were living in, my, in her parents' house in Santo Domingo. And then we wound up getting pregnant again, flew to the United States, had our baby. There was I negotiating on one hand with MasterCard, on the other hand with bill collectors because I couldn't pay. And lo and behold, one week before Thanksgiving, we finally got all the approvals that we needed. On the day before Thanksgiving, we got on a closing call with all of the lawyers. And they said, ladies and gentlemen, all these items conclude the closing checklist for the acquisition. We will be sending wires today. And I completely flipped. The next morning, I watched Bloomberg and it says, MasterCard acquires payment platform Arcus, shares rise by three and a half percent. In that moment, made everything worthwhile to me. It completely changed everything for me. But more importantly, I felt gratitude. I felt gratitude that I had the opportunity and the privilege to work on something greater than myself and become the best version of myself. By gratitude, I had the opportunity to be an agent of change and somebody that could represent something bigger than myself. Adrizio's story is one of the most inspiring ones I've run across in my years in the YC world. Arcus was acquired by MasterCard and Enrizio just published a book called The Underdog Founder. Link in the description below. This is America. Anyone who wants to work hard, has a dream, and is willing to put in the work can get ahead. I'm so proud of Adrizio and I hope his story inspires you to realize what might make you different can also become the reason you succeed. I'll see you next time.